How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, and I have a ham radio emergency rescue story that I had heard about when it was going on. There was a post back in April 5th uh, that I got pinged on to see if I could hear somebody on 10 meters. Unfortunately, I, I didn't hear about it with enough time that I could actually be of any use, but somebody did, Caleb. Caleb heard an individual on 10 meters in Death Valley, California. For reference, Caleb is in Ohio. At least that's my understanding uh, from some of the news updates that I've gotten here. He was able to, with a very weak copy, get information on the individual that was lost and relay that information to the National Park Service. Now, I also want to make a huge shout out to everybody on the Parks on the Air group on Facebook. You guys did a fantastic job leaping into action to try and do everything you could. Lots of people jumped in and was actually able to hear this individual. Now, I thought that was kind of where it was at. I was even kind of worried that this was kind of a joke or a prank or something that somebody had put on. Turns out, no, it wasn't. And there's been some resolutions. This is from the Black Swamp Amateur Radio Club. On Saturday, April 6, around 2200 UTC, Caleb Gustweiler, KD8TGB, picked up a distress call on 10 meters from Death Valley. Caleb managed to pull the operator's call sign and general location from the weak signal, but then lost the signal from the operator. He then asked other club members if they could hear the signal from their location. Only one other member was able to pull the call sign and general location. Caleb then posted on the POTA website page asking for others to also check the signal. He then called the San Diego Police Department to report the call, as he did other POTA operators from around the country. Craig Rauer, KE8QJV, and then called the Death Valley Park Services, as did other operators from around the country. In the meantime, many operators from around the country continue to monitor and try to reach the operator in distress. Several hours later, the operator who had put out the distress call was found by park rangers. Due to the fast actions by amateurs from across the country, as well as multiple agencies working together, this operator and his family were able to go home that that night safe and sound. So a uh, 10 meter contact, right? This was an amateur radio operator that was in distress and they were with their family. Everybody at the Black Swamp Amateur Radio Club is proud to call Caleb a fellow member. And I'm happy to call him a fellow ham as well. A friend and we are extremely proud of his actions. Without Caleb's hearing this distress call, it could have quickly became a very deadly situation for the operator and his family who had gotten their vehicle stuck in the mud in a very dangerous place. Good work, Caleb. We are extremely proud of you. Man, shout out to Caleb. Here is his QRZ page. That looks to be the man right there. Uh, back in the hobby, licensed in 2012 and took a break and has since come back. Well, I think the operator who got stuck uh, owes you things that you came back to ham radio. Amazing job across the board. Looks like he's got a pretty nice little setup. Gets out there and does some POTA as well. You know, a couple of things to, to mention here, and this comes up occasionally, that amateur radio, you know, it, it's good for emergencies, but, you know, it's not a real-time thing like a satellite phone or a spot device or something along those lines. Uh, but when the situation arises and cell phones likely aren't working, I'm assuming that the operator tried that first, Amateur radio is a fantastic way to not just reach outside of the immediate area, again, of the emergency. This individual is definitely having an emergency where he was at, but reach out to Ohio from California on 10 meters. That is fantastic that he was able to do that. And it's something that, you know, GMRS, love you, but uh, can't do that. And neither can the other radio services. It's something that amateur radio can do that others can't. That's not to say that there isn't a place for all of them. No, what I would argue is that you should have all of these in a PACE plan, right? Your primary alternate contingency and emergency communication methods. That should include a spot device, particularly if you go outdoors like this, right? More than your cell phone, you've got to have a layered approach to this kind of stuff. So fantastic end result that we got the safe recovery of a family that got stuck in the mud in Death Valley, and it was because of a radio operator in Ohio that made it happen. So, Caleb, congratulations. Good job. 73 to y'all. And uh, keep this in mind, why you should be monitoring HF, why you should be monitoring your ham radio, because there might be somebody out there that actually needs your help, and it happens more often than you think. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. 73.